Hi, and welcome to the Frog Pond School of Design, where we like to talk about things architectural. Now, we've talked in the past about some of the extremely tall buildings in the world, um, and also about some of the challenges with those buildings, damping the swaying that goes on and that sort of thing. It seems like most of the really tall buildings these days are being built on the other side of the world in those oil-rich countries who like to flaunt their affluence a little bit, you know. <clears throat> but there's a trend going on right here in the United States, specifically in New York City, uh, with tall buildings that's, that's rather interesting. What's happening here is that because of smaller lot sizes as the, the city gets developed more, they're, they're wanting to build skinnier buildings, tall buildings that aren't as big horizontally as they are vertically, and they're calling these skinny buildings. Um, it's, it's becoming more possible because of advances in uh, material, strength materials and this sort of thing, and in our understanding of how the wind affects a tall building and the sh how the shape of the building can, um, can improve things there. <clears throat> Also, though, what's going on in New York is because of, of this trend of smaller lots and that sort of thing, they're delving more into the building codes and the, uh, the ordinances and finding ways around some of the limitations that, that have been in place for a long time. One of the tools that they're using is called air rights. <clears throat> so if, I mean, there are height limitations. So if your uh, building wants to be taller, it can look around for other buildings in the area that aren't as tall as they could be and buy from those people the extra height that they didn't use. <coughs> Excuse me. The other advantage of this is if you want to protect a view, you can buy the air rights over a building that if someone were to build a taller building there would block your view. Because most of these um, high-end apartment buildings that are going up um, depend a great deal on their view. Um, there's an area called Billionaire's Row right at the end of <clears throat> Central Park. So there's a lot of view issues going on there that they're, they're trying to protect. And the air rights are another tool uh, to do that. So the one building that get, is getting the most attention right now is called the Steinway Tower. Now it's called the Steinway Tower because the old Steinway building is still there on the site and part of the deal with you can build this building but you have to restore the Steinway building so that's been done the buildings up it's in use now it's a few years old it is 24 times taller <clears throat> than it is wide which looks makes it look like a pencil sticking up there in the uh, in the middle of the city it's so small that there's only one apartment per floor. The elevator actually opens <clears throat> directly into, <coughs> excuse me, opens directly into the apartment. And these apartments go for $15 million or something like that. The penthouse, I believe, sold for something in the neighborhood of $66 million. So these are high-end spaces, and uh, and they're being made possible by this, this new trend of... Uh, uh, tall skinny buildings and the almighty dollar is driving what's going on there so thanks for joining us today at the frog pond school of design i look forward to seeing you hanging around the pond again real soon